My name is Sonia Stewart. Um, I work for Manchester City Council and I'm a long-serving member um, of the council. My current role job title is Human Resources Organisational Development Specialist and I'm also a Joint Trade Union Officer. Now, the Joint Trade Union Officer bit is around quality assurance for people movement around the council. So I look after any concerns that they have. So this involves engaging with um, union members from Unison, Unite and GMB and also non-union members. You know, as long as they work for the council, I'm here to try and sort their problems out for them. Uh, my pre previous management positions have included wholesale market manager, so I was that manager for New Smithfield Wholesale Market. I've also been project manager, resource manager, and um, some years ago, I was seconded to the Commonwealth Games for a few years, and I had various management positions there, uh, including venue tours manager. I was one of uh, a number of pre-games um, events operations managers. I was also a VIP sports manager, and following the games, I was a, a member of the post-games report team as well. So over the years, I've gained uh, numerous qualifications. I've had lots of training along the way. So my qualifications, although I don't usually you know, shout about it, my qualifications include administrative management, public administration, private secretarial, because I'm a qualified private secretary, NVQ assessor, I do training and development, mediation. I'm also a life coach. I've done a neuro-linguistic programming, or NLP, and that's about body language. Uh, I've got uh, City and Gills in Creative Skills in Sugarcraft, so I do cake decorating as well in my spare time. And I'm a member of the Institute of Personnel and Development. Uh, I've got general training that includes facilitation, mentoring, essential management skills, health and safety at work, diversity awareness, career coach. I've been trained in information security, um, events management and registration. The registration bit is because I'm a registrar of marriages as well in my spare time. For the Commonwealth Games, which was a really fantastic time, and it was great to be involved in, in, in all that happened, I was actually seconded to the Games for over a few years, and this is before we'd even got the bid. So I was involved in the, with the bidding team in travelling to different countries um, to try and sell Manchester, which we must have done very well because we got the bid. Um, now, the decision was made in Bermuda, and you know when I came back, people were saying, oh, what was Bermuda like? Well, I don't know, because it was work, but it was so, so great, even though it was hard work. During um, the run-up to the Games, I, one of my uh, roles was as venue tours manager, which meant arranging tours for people to visit all the Commonwealth Games venues in and around Manchester. So I built that section from scratch and I also trained tour guides to take people around. And um, the other role I had before that actually was a sports liaison uh, officer, which meant I had to contact all the Commonwealth countries uh, who were going to be um, involved in the games to find out how many athletes were attending how many officials were attending, etc. So it was a full-on role. I won the Council's Awards for Excellence for Contribution to Diversity and Inclusion in Manchester. That was a great time. I also organised the first centralised BME Jobs Fair uh, for City Council because what they had then was they had LGBT and they had um, disabled centralised jobs fairs. They didn't have a BME one, so I challenged that and uh, got to organise one. On the day we had over 1,000 visitors, 
we had over 40 odd um, um, exhibitors and we promoted over 250 vacancies on that day. It was really, really successful. Um, I've also appeared in various council and union publications. And going back to the Commonwealth Games, um, I'm really proud that as part of the international report that went all around the world, my report on the venue, uh, the venue tour section was included. And it was actually uh, to be used as a guide for other countries who were going to be bidding for the Games in future years. So I'm really proud of that. Um, I presently manage and produce a newsletter called Equality Matters for the branch, which the branch widely circulates. Um, I'm a former coordinator of Street to Stadium Charitable Trust, and this was aimed at helping disadvantaged and disaffected young people between the ages of 11 and 19 to develop in life, to keep them off the streets and take them into stadia that they might never have had a chance to go into. So for some examples, um, I took them into Manchester United. Um, they went into what was then 9X because I used to arrange, um, organise events as well, like six-a-side football matches, you know, and, and, and other events. We had a bit of abseiling as well. So the young people met Alex Ferguson, they met David Beckham, and they met other sporting stars from other sports as well. And we also gave grants, so that was very successful. And that was a partnership between Manchester, Salford, Trafford and Tameside Councils. Um, I was also the Manchester event lead for Spirit of Partnership, which was about uh, encouraging cross-boundary activities. Um, so promoting and getting people to engage in activities that were not within their particular area. And that was throughout Greater Manchester. I was the lead on community briefings in the 80s. So what I did was, because we needed more representation of uh, black people within the council, I went out into the communities to tell them about the council's employment practices and advise them on how to apply for council jobs. Um, I'm a former lead on BME development for the council and a former member of the National Association for Race Equality Advisors and that was in the 80s when I used to be a senior race officer. I'm one of the founder members of Nalgo Black Members Group and that was in the 70s. So in terms of voluntary uh, community roles over the years, I'm the former um, event manager and chair of the organising committee for the Caribbean Carnival of Manchester. Um, the work I did in leading uh, the changes around that, which meant um, developing new alliances, building bridges with different um, organisations and bringing the event back to a family orientated event. Um, and in 2008, we won the Heritage Lottery Regional Award, which, uh, which was a great bonus. My involvement in Carnival goes back to the time when Arthur Jones, the late Arthur Jones, uh, used to run the Carnival. So that, that was a long time ago. And not many people remember that I was involved at that early stage. I am a former board member of Carioca Enterprises, where I was chair of the audit committee. I'm a former community advisory panel member for Manchester Museum. And the remit of the panel was to try and encourage more people from the communities to be involved in what was in the, the museum, you know, and, and to have a voice in what went on there. I'm a former management committee member um, in fact, I was a secretary of the original Hideaway Youth Club. Not many people remember that. That was in the 70s. Um, I used to be on the management committee for the Near Centre. Uh, I've been a school reading mentor. I've been a mentor for Reclaim. And I've organised various community events. The 
The most recent one was the Manchester, it did with the um, International Men's Day, which was on the 19th of November of this year. Now, um, I did that particularly because the International Men's Day is not as well known as the Women's Day. And I think we have to basically big up our men more than we actually do. So that was about being positive, um, recognising the achievements and contributions that men make, particularly to family and community. So that was a really successful event. Um, and we raised £170 via raffle and donations, which we've donated to charity research uh, into prostate cancer. Many challenges over the years, including race and sex discrimination, so that's a double oppression. It's bad enough having one, but when you've got two, you've got to work a whole lot harder. So examples, say, for in employment, give you some examples of excuses and comments of why I didn't get a job or why I should do things a different way. So starting from uh, my school careers officer, uh, what would you like to do when you leave school? Oh, I'd like to work in an office. Why do you want to do that? You know, go and work in a factory and do some packing. You don't even have to think about it. Well, I never went back. I never went back to see that career officer. And then being turned down for jobs. Uh, sorry, but you're overqualified. I heard that quite a few times. Um, I was even asked at one interview which newspaper I read. Um, then when I'm working, what, you're doing another course? Because, yeah, I just keep going and going and going. Uh, or I'm told, oh, you were so close to getting the job, you just missed out. So each setback has made me stronger and more determined to succeed because um, my belief in my capabilities, my faith, my family support and inner strength have really, really kept me going. Um, but I've not only challenged inequalities around myself, but for other people on behalf of other people as well. So when I overcome whatever challenge it is, and it's not always straightforward, I move on to the next goal. So I'm multi-skilled. Um, I've worked uh, in multitasking for as long as I can remember and I've used my transferable skills in the different roles uh, that I've had. And with my qualities, experience, skills and knowledge over the years, that's been prevalent throughout my career, but it has helped me to support so many people in um, having the equal opportunities that they're rightfully entitled to. Prior to Unison, um, I was a, a NALGO uh, member and NALGO is National Association of Local Government Officers. Uh, so I was very active in NALGO um, and now an active trade union member in Unison. I've had quite a bit of training through Unison. I'm the branch equality officer. Um, I'm trained in building equality in the workplace, mentoring trade union representatives, building workplace organisation in terms of trade unions. So I've done quite a bit of training through Unison and I've also um, done employment law as well. Um, I'm a former Manchester branch Unison chair, uh, but in addition to representing members' concerns around equalities and the protected characteristics of the Equality Act 2010, I'm also a member of the Northwest Black Members Committee. So I'm the Equality Officer and Chair. I'm elected to the National Black Members Committee. I'm a member of the Black Activists and Staff Development Project Board and a representative to the Northwest Women's Committee, the Regional Local Government Service Group, um, the Regional Publicity and Campaigning Committee as well. So I'm quite busy. Um, now, as part of the branches reach out to the community, I mentioned earlier on that I organised an International Men's Day event. That was quite successful. Um, it's the first one that I've done. Not a lot of people know about the International Men's Day. Um, it actually started out in America. Um, it didn't do very well. 
It then went to the Caribbean and it was restarted in Trinidad. Um, so the branch supported that event very well, as well as several local small business people. Um, I held the event in uh, the community at the West Indian Centre. Um, I also formed a small planning group from the community um, to be involved in that. Now, because it's about males, um, I wanted to involve young black males as well. It's not just about black males, but, you know, I wanted to involve them as well because they often get left out of what is going on. So, as I said before, it's about being supportive, respectful, you know, and, and recognising achievements and, and commitments. So the overall theme for that was forward together. And, you know, we collected money to go towards um, charity. For next year, because I was asked to continue organising these events, for next year, the, the overall theme will be our youth, our heritage. And what I'm going to be doing is organising a fundraising event in the summer called Lift Them Up. That's within the overall theme. And so it's going to focus on young men. I knew Louise from before she had all these uh, great, great awards and she has worked very hard for them. Um, I found her to be a staunch community leader. That, that's in the real sense because the term community leader seems to be a bit different nowadays. Um, in those days, it was just work, 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 work on behalf of everybody. Uh, you know, you're not expecting anything back. You're not expecting pay. And she was one of these community leaders, the original community leaders that we used to have. I found her to be a strong black woman with presence and she was, she was never afraid to speak up um, and she wouldn't let anyone disrespect her. She was one of the founder members for Karaoke Enterprises and a domi dominant force wherever she went. I knew her through my community work and also my council work when I was a secretary and a senior race officer. I've got a little interesting incident that happened in, in the 80s where um, Louise came into the office I was working in and she mistook me for the clerical officer. So knock, knock, come in, the door opens and she looked at me and then walked past me and went behind to um, um, someone else. And then she got redirected back to me because I was a senior person. And, you know, give her her due. She was gracious in apologising for her error. Now, that was because in those days, in the 80s, it was unusual for a black secretary to be seen working in a high-powered political office. But I've always admired her, you know. So in terms of, say, what influenced my relationship with Louise, I saw similarities in myself in that she had inner strength, she was ambitious, she was resilient, she never let anything put her off. She had leadership qualities. She was a no-messing person with a can-do attitude. And she was always wanting to help others but also to give something back. Giving something back is really, really important because we can all strive to go somewhere, but remember there are other people as well who want to go down the same path. Um, I'd like to say it's great to be recognised, but it's also great to give something back, as I've mentioned before. And to women, I say, don't forget to support those who aspire to succeed but who may not have the confidence to ask for support. Um, don't forget to support your local services. Believe in yourself and your worth and it's never too late to develop. And in the words of Julie Garland, be a first-rate version of yourself and not a second-rate version of someone else. And Finally, um, I hope you don't mind, but inspired by this women's project, 
a couple of days ago I composed a poem, so I would like to read that to you. Please do, please read out your poetry, that's fantastic. Thank you. So, um, my poem is entitled, Strong Black Woman That I Am. Strong black woman that I am. Don't tell me not to say that. You weren't there when I needed a hand, when some thought I'd fall flat. You weren't there when I was down and the road seemed long and hard. You weren't there to see my tears shed daily in my yard. You don't know the struggles I've had to get to where I am. So don't assume that my path has been an easy one. Strong black woman that I am, be proud that I've come through because what you don't realise as a man is that I've been helping you too. Thank you so much for letting me read that. <laughs>